This scene isn't what you think it is. Let me tell you about Firefly's best fan theory. There's a huge continuity error sitting right at the heart of Firefly, and that is the disparity between how River's liberation from the Academy is presented between the series and the movie, to the point where they're basically contradictory and irreconcilable given a conventional understanding of the show. You know how I despise continuity errors. So, let's fix Firefly. In the show, we're told by Simon that he paid a group, some underground movement, to rescue River from the Academy. In the movie, we see Simon apparently infiltrate the Academy himself. In the series, we're told repeatedly that Simon doesn't know what the Alliance was doing to River. There's an entire episode revolving around his need to obtain specialist equipment to start figuring it out. Yet in the movie, we see Simon, posing as an Alliance inspector, apparently viewing the Academy at work on River, and seemingly being given a tour of the facility by Dr. Matthias. In the series, Simon seems sceptical about River being psychic. In the movie, he explicitly says that she is. In the series, Simon is taken aback by the idea that River is dangerous. Yet in the movie, we see Dr. Matthias, speaking to Simon, refer to her as a living weapon, ideal for defence deployment. So what's the solution? It's actually incredibly elegant. Let me ask you, what does the overall timeline of Firefly look like? Conventionally, it's pictured as something like this. The movie starts with the Academy flashback, then jumps eight months ahead to the main events of the movie. And we put the events of Firefly into that eight month gap with a few months between the show and the movie, right? That's how it's mostly understood. This is the conventional understanding. But of course, this leaves us with all these continuity problems. How can Simon be entirely ignorant of River's condition when he spoke to the Academy boss and even watched them work on her? Why does he say he paid others to rescue her when he did it himself? How can he have forgotten that River is psychic? Why does he know that River was being conditioned for defence deployment and then failed to volunteer her potential combat abilities in objects in space? This doesn't work. So let me show you what does work. If we move that entire eight month timeline of Serenity to after Firefly, things start to make a bit more sense. So what we're saying is that the Academy flashback scene actually occurs after the series, not before. If we choose this interpretation, all the stuff Simon knows in the Academy scene, well, they're just fine. It's all stuff he's learned during or after Firefly. Now this of course implies a significant off-screen event. Namely that, at some point after the series, River is recaptured by the Alliance and brought back to the Academy. This gives the theory its name. River Recaptured. I know that this idea can take some getting used to. Most people reject it at first because it defies the understandable initial assumption. But to be clear, this idea really works right out of the gate. This isn't a proposed rewrite. This idea fits everything that we see on screen already. This works. And in my view, it works better than the conventional interpretation. So please, I invite you to rewatch the movie and try to find something which renders this theory unviable. I've done so many times and I haven't found anything which could be used to definitively disprove this idea. There are of course some questions that arise from the theory, most obviously, how did the Alliance capture River? But that's nothing that couldn't, in principle, be explained in a believable and non-convoluted way by a comic or novel in the future. I love the River Recapture theory, not only because it so elegantly solves the biggest continuity problems from the movie, but it also has a bunch of other beneficial side effects. Let's talk about how else this theory impacts the canon. Firstly, it makes it easier to understand the difference between the Hands of Blue and the Operative. This doesn't get talked about much, but the Hands of Blue and the Operative have wildly different approaches and mission objectives. The Hands of Blue want to recover River alive. The Operative wants her dead. The Hands of Blue are not at all covert in their operation. There's a very public bounty on the Tam's heads. The Operative, on the other hand, is explicitly working in secret. Despite what the last two pages of Those Left Behind say, the Operative is definitely not inheriting the exact same mission from the Hands of Blue. This theory allows for cleaner explanation. The Hands of Blue just want to recover River because the Academy wants to continue their work on her. She's not especially important to the Alliance in the bigger scheme of things. At some point after River's second rescue, however, 
in this new section of the timeline, which we maybe think of as Firefly Season 2, the Alliance realises that River may pose an existential threat to them, because she may have information about Miranda, and they then send the operative to take her out. Possibly that's an opportunity for another novel. How does the Alliance come to the realisation that River may pose a threat to them? This theory creates some room for a distinction between these two very different types of agent to be made more clearly, as I think the conventional understanding sort of muddies the two together. Number two. By introducing a second rescue, we create an important checkpoint in Simon's character arc. Simon would never have infiltrated an Alliance facility on his own at the beginning of Firefly. Indeed, we know that he paid others to get the job done. But after months of living and working with the crew of Serenity, Simon has a new confidence and skill set which allow him to do the job personally. This event serves to show how far Simon has come. And of course, there's another potential novel. What are the circumstances surrounding Simon rescuing River in the Academy flashback scene? Number three, by introducing another year or so into the Firefly timeline, it's a bit easier to accept the radically altered appearances of the characters between series and movie. Book and River look visibly older, and Kaylee and Jane are certainly leaner. I know it's not a huge deal, and it's just a result of there being three real-world years between series and movie, but it's still beneficial to have an in-universe explanation. Number four, talking of characters changing. If you've ever watched Serenity right after binging Firefly, you'll probably have noticed that the dynamic between the crew members is very different in the movie. It's darker and far less convivial. They feel less like a family. The characters are noticeably angrier and less friendly towards one another. It's easier to accept that change if you imagine that there's been an entire season of things not going well for these guys that's really pushed them to the edge. Well, this theory provides the time for that to happen. Number five, I know it's a bit soppy, but this theory gives these two another year together. And finally, the extended timeline allows for the Dark Horse comics and Titan novels to fit into the canon, as the conventional timeline of only eight months from pilot to movie just isn't long enough to include them. And by elongating the timeline, we've also created a big blank canvas, a new space in which future Firefly stories can be told. Now, to be clear, I'm not trying to say that this was the authorial or directorial intent. I imagine that Joss Whedon was simply just hard retconning the story in order to make it simpler for the general cinema going audience. What I'm saying is, I don't like such a hard retcon and, well, this theory is better and has more storytelling potential. However, I do wonder whether this could have perhaps been how the series might have unfolded had Firefly not been cancelled. I don't think there were any hard plans for what most of season two would have looked like, so in a sense this is a question without an answer. I'm not saying that this is what season two would have been, but I do think that it could have been. It's not a crazy plot. Let me just make some points and see what you think. If there is a single overarching plot thread throughout Firefly, it's that of the Alliance Hunting River. The logical conclusion to this plot thread is that eventually they succeed and recapture her. And is it such a crazy suggestion that the Alliance might have recaptured River let's say at the end of season one, it could have been the season one cliffhanger. I don't think that's crazy. In fact, it's basically exactly the same thing that happens at the end of the second season of The Mandalorian. The special child that the bad guys were experimenting on, who was being protected by the rogue mercenary, is recaptured by the bad guys and needs to be rescued again. If it works in The Mandalorian, I don't think you can really argue it wouldn't work in Firefly. This idea of River being recaptured as a season one cliffhanger and being rescued in a season two premiere, it's very similar to three separate instances from Buffy and Angel. In Buffy season two, Buffy leaves town. Buffy season five, Buffy dies. Angel season three, Angel is sunk to the bottom of the ocean. In every instance, the season ends with the main character exiting the stage, as it were, only for them to return at the beginning of the next season. If it happens in Buffy and Angel, it's not a leap to imagine seeing it happen in Firefly as well. This is Firefly's best fan theory. It elegantly squashes an enormous continuity error. It gives room for smaller errors to be fixed, all the while actually leaving the story itself better than before. 
It fits everything that we see on screen, much better than the conventional interpretation does. It also feels like something which reasonably could have been seen in the show, had it not been cancelled. And on top of that, it introduces further storytelling potential by creating a new, mostly empty section of the timeline. If you're not on board, really, please give it a chance. I know it's difficult to accept at first because it just defies your initial assumptions, but watch the series and movie with this idea in mind, and I think you'll realise that it actually does make a lot of sense, and that it is, dare I say it, the superior way to approach the series and movie. This is one of my favourite Firefly topics, so I hope that you liked the video, and please let me know if you agree or disagree, or whether you like the theory or not. Depending on the interest, I may make a follow-up video to get further into the nitty-gritty of this theory. Until then, likes, comments, subscribes, very much appreciated, and stay shiny folks.